Welcome to DentonRadio.com, powered in part by Thinline Fest and Classic of Denton. Well, guys, thank you very much for joining us yet again at DentonRadio.com. Now, we've been doing a lot of work with Thinline Fest over the last well, really month, two months now, bringing you a lot of cool interviews. And for all of you that thought Thin Line was a rinky-dink fest with little guests, we are about to blow your mind because live in the studio we have... I'm Dea Schlossberg, uh, co-producer of The Reluctant Radical. Guys, this is going to be an amazing, amazing film. If you've not checked it out already, you really, really need to. Uh, Thin Line has got some amazing, amazing films going on this year. And, uh, and this is just one of many. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the film and all that good stuff and everything that you are, are bringing th- down the red carpet here at, uh, <laughs> at Thin Line. Sure, yeah. The Reluctant Radical is a, a character portrait of one a- a climate activist. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's kind of looking at human motivation and what, what drives us to matter in the world mm. and make change. Um, and the film, the film follows... Ken Ward, a uh, climate activist from, or who lives in Oregon, uh, through his many years of working in the climate movement in various capacities, starting from um, more formal, traditional, kind of like within organizations and um, heading up uh, national groups to mm-hmm. um, a, a point where he had to, where he decided it, it made more sense to, to pursue a path of um, nonviolent direct action. Mm. Um, that he felt like what was required of him to make a difference um, with increasing climate catastrophe looming mm. um, was taking more direct action. Um, so it's it explores his process going through that. Super cool. Super, super cool. So I don't want to give too much away or mm-hmm. anything. I want people to go see it and enjoy it and all that good stuff. But um, but give us a little bit. Uh, give us a little taste. Give us a couple of highlights that people can see when they go check out this film. Um, well, it's. Uh, I think the reason that I jumped on um, is because it's not. It's not so much a didactic advocacy piece. It's it's looking at. Um, it's looking at his his perspective of mm. climate and it kind of um like he ends up uh committing or along with um several other activists in the climate movement he ends up um getting charged with several felonies mm. um with the potential to spend multiple decades in prison oh wow um so it makes it ma- i think it makes everybody ask what what is so um, dire and compelling that would that would make people take um, actions that are that extreme, mm. and it puts the audience in the kind of in the place of the jury. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, I like that twist. Very cool. So, uh, what what was it? Wh- where did you find this story? I mean, <laughs> what was it that grabbed you and was like, "This is a story I got to tell." Well, I came on board this film a little late in the process. Um, I had I've spent the last many years working on climate change and films related to climate change and environmental Mm. justice and, and the like. And, um, I, I went to, uh, North Dakota because I heard that there was going to be a pipeline protest in solidarity with Standing Rock, wherein several activists were going to actually shut down the, the emergency shutoff valves of the five pipelines that bring tar sands oil from Canada into the U S Um, and I thought that that was important to document. Um, it was it was while Standing Rock and the No Dapple pipeline protests were happening, and right after Amy Goodman was arrested for for documenting um, what was happening there, um, and there was there was clearly a, a lack in coverage from mainstream media. So as an independent filmmaker, um, I felt that I had a responsibility as somebody that has been covering climate issues for for a long time to go and document this action Mm. um, knowing it could have pretty far reaching implications Um, so i went to north dakota and and filmed um, that action on uh, it was october 11th 2016 Um, and 
the action took place. Uh, and then when the, uh, the cops came and arrested the activists, and then they told me I was under arrest. Whoa. And I said, no, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just here filming it. Yeah. Like I was, I, I'm not, I'm not part of this. I'm, I'm filming it. Um, and they were, they were like, no, you're, you're under arrest too. So they ended up bringing me to, to the jail and, um, uh, locked me up for a couple of days oh, and then, nice. uh, gave me some, served me with charges and they were, um, felonies, mm. multiple felonies and the total, um, total maximum sentencing, um, was 45 years. Whoa. Yeah. That was my reaction. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty, um, it was, it was, inc- it was incredibly unsettling, uh-huh. obviously, and, uh, pretty terrifying, uh, to, r- yeah. Um, I thought surely like they'll, they'll, f- they'll realize what was going on here and mm-hmm. that I just got swept up in it and, and let me go. But no, they, I was, I was on the hook with felonies. Wow. Um, so eventually I got out on bail and I learned that in a couple of the other sites around the country where where this action was was happening um the filmmakers also got tr- arrested and charged mm. Lindsay Grazel being one of them she was documenting Ken shutting down the pipeline in, in Washington state mm-hmm. and she was arrested taken to jail and charged with felonies mm. so when we both got out on bail and learned that we were in the same boat we called each other pretty quick and yeah. <laughs> like what what do we do what's, what's going, on? going on this is insane um and th- at that point i learned more about the film she had been working on she was following ken for the last year and a half mm. documenting his escalating mm-hmm. actions um so this was just part of her film the reluctant right. radical she's the dire- director um and we realized um well, she told me more about the film. I thought it was very compelling yeah. um, and wanted to help, wanted to help get it out there. She sent me some some clips that I thought were um, just really, really intimate and a different take on regular or a lot of most climate films, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, just a lot more personal, a lot more human. Um, it puts the the audience in a different place, mm-hmm. kind of a, um, a more open I think place um because it is more of a portrait Mm -hmm. uh, than a than an issue piece um so she this was her first featured doc independent feature doc she's Mm -hmm. done a lot of work uh mostly for organizations and um and this was the first one that she was just compelled to do on her own um and I had been through the whole festival thing before and distribution mm-hmm. thing um with several of my past films so uh we joined forces toward the end of production mm-hmm. and um worked together to finish up the edit she's the lead editor i think she did cool. an incredible job um and then we've been getting it out in the world and so cool yeah so cool well since you guys i mean are are intimately involved with the narrative maybe not this particular narrative but are you guys in the film at all or is it just the passion that drove you to create it um not we're not in it as characters there okay. there are a couple little shots where Lindsay, you catch Lindsay like in reflections and gotcha like, um but yeah we're we're just we were documenting very cool well it's a very 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 cool concept and very very interesting um so I want to uh, put pause on or, or press pause on the, the film for just a second, even though I think it's going to be really, really cool. People got to go check it out. Um, but again, what and we got to talk about, th- about this a little bit before we got started. What's been really fun for us here uh, at Den Radio Discover Denton is uh, we've gotten to watch the progression of Thin Line as it's grown and grown and grown and grown and grown to become this really great festival. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and and pulling in really caliber, uh, high caliber documentary makers like yourself. So I wanted to talk a little bit about your background, some of the other projects you've worked on, all that. Good. So just to give everybody that's new to Thin Line this year some context of the caliber of films and filmmakers that they're going to get to see. Sure. Um, I'm actually really excited to be here this year. Um, I produced a film uh, that that Josh Fox directed called How to Let Go of the World and Love All the Things Climate Can't Change, which is mm. at Thin Line a couple years ago. 
and cool. we weren't able or I wasn't able to make it down uh for that one so it's it's it's, it's exciting to be here yeah. with another film um but yeah that that one premiered at Sundance um and went on to HBO and wow. um I worked on another project with Josh um called Awake a Dream from Standing Rock that mm. premiered at Tribeca last year uh and has been picked up by Netflix um and we are on the reluctant radical we're we're still seeking distribution trying to figure out where this is going to live cool. once we're done with the festival circuit and community screenings um so yeah i mean i i the lineup is incredible there's all sorts yeah. of films that are we're like award winners at sundance and and all sorts of other big fests around and um yeah it's an impressive impressive list very very cool well um it's it's an honor to have all of you guys here bringing these great films and and coming from all over and uh, us getting to to share denton and, and show off denton a little bit so uh if somebody wants to see your film they can go where when okay so the reluctant <laughs> radical is screening at movie tavern tonight thursday at seven forty-five p.m and then saturday at eleven thirty a.m again at movie tavern Awesome. Now that's something new this year to Thin Line because we've always been at the Campus Theater just here on the corner, mm -hmm. which is a gorgeous theater. And then uh, this year Thin Line opened it up to Movie Tavern. So anybody watching, we've got more screens than ever before at Thin Line. Uh, so you can be enjoying the Movie Tavern. You can be enjoying downtown. You can be over at Golden Triangle Mall checking stuff out. You can be over on all these different music venues. It's a pretty incredible deal. And if you weren't aware yet, Thin Line is is free everybody f-r-e-e -E, free the only thing you got to do is go to thinline.us and reserve your spot so if you have not done it yet you got to jump on there right now and check it out thinline.us you're never going to get this kind of music this kind of photography and this kind of film for free ever again so you gotta do it right now thinline.us thank you so so much for coming in is there anything else we want to talk about with the film before we wrap up um i would just say come come check it out i i agree it's totally cool that that thin line's offering all this stuff for free yeah um so yeah hope Love to it. see folks out there tonight well, guys, don't miss the film. It is screening or premiering here at Thin Line tonight. Don't miss it. It's going to be as good as it gets here in Denton this week. Y'all, thank you so much for tuning in to DentonRadio.com. We're going to jump back into the music, but stay tuned for all things local music and entertainment. And don't miss Thin Line. Don't let it go by. This is day two. We're going all through the weekend. Get your space reserved now. Thank you again so much for doing this. Thanks really for having appreciate me on. It. Thanks for tuning well, thank in, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't miss the Thinline Film, Music, and Photo Festival coming up soon. Make sure to register at thinline.us. And while you're surfing the Internet, make sure you check out our friends Classic of Denton at classicofdenton.com.